Welcome to the Fishing Daily Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Oliver McBride, and today we welcome back Dr. Tom Pickerel from the North Atlantic Pelagic Advocacy Group, and he is here to tell us what is happening with Napa and what is happening out there in the pelagic world. Welcome back, Tom. Uh, hi, thanks very much for having me back. So, Tom, what's happening in Napa these days? Um, where are we with the fishery improvement projects for uh, blue whiting and atlanto scandal herring? Yeah, so we've made since we last spoke, we've made some um, big uh, developments, which is fantastic. So the North Atlantic mackerel and the atlanto scandic herring fishery improvement project has been formally launched, and you can find all the details on that on a platform called fisheryprogress.org. And also that uh, is on our Twitter and our LinkedIn pages, the access to that one. So that was launched in May and we've done a bit of a um, sort of a media uh, blitz around the launch of that. And for the next couple of months in the run up to the coastal states meetings, we're going to be doing our formal advocacy program. Uh, so we're going to be liaising with the fisheries ministers of the coastal states to explain to them what the challenges are what the sort of the market interest is the consequences of inaction and putting our three asks of them which is uh, in terms of the the management of the fisheries follow the scientific advice um, address the allocation issues and have a long-term management plan so that one's progressing really well um, blue whiting we're running this improvement project through the marin trust program because this is uh, predominantly a marine ingredient. And the reason we've chosen Marin Trust is because you actually gain recognition for the improvement work for both the fish and the marine ingredient. So it was, it was something that our steering committee was very keen to do. So we've completed the application form. We've submitted that to Marin Trust. Uh, we have all of just about all of our partners signed the application form, which is great. And we've got our marine ingredient producers, so not necessarily Napa, partners have signed as well expressing their support for the work we're doing so that was a big job pulling together that uh, all the paperwork but that's now formally submitted and that's now in the uh, marin trust sausage machine these fisheries improvement projects as you said there's members that we call that's um, outside of napa signing up for them is there more that can come on board to onto these, this project? Absolutely, yeah, there's no there's no restrictions uh, from our perspective, um, as long as the, uh, the the companies meet the, the criteria. So we're, we're, it's very much a supply chain um, membership organization rather than a catching sector organization. Um, you, NGOs, uh, we've got a couple of NGOs we work with, but they're not actually part of NAPA. Uh, one of our big um, new bits of news about partners is we had the Japanese co-op co join which is fantastic to demonstrate the interest in north atlantic pelagics that goes beyond europe uh, of course uh, i'm sure many of your your listeners and viewers will know that um, norwegian mackerel for example is a is a very popular brand in japan so we are working uh, to to expand the the membership in the markets that buy the products from this region so japanese co-op was a was a great new member so fishery improvement projects, is, is there a, what sort of size of team have you working on these? And, and you're also working with the Marin Trust on the blue whiting? That's right. So for the, uh, for the fishery, for the Napa team itself is myself as a project lead working with Seafish, who does the, um, as well as being the chair of Napa, does the, the administrative side and the financial side of Napa. But we've also got a communications team, uh, Mindfully Wired Communications Limited, who are uh, sort of a dedicated fisheries uh, comms consultancy. So they've been, they've been an absolute uh, breath of fresh air into our communications and our outreach. So between us, uh, we're doing the, the work around the FIP. Now we're quite fortunate because it, this is what we call a policy FIP or a policy improvement project for the Marin Trust. So the improvement needs around these fisheries are entirely policy based. So it's not that the, the fishermen have to change the gear types or put cameras on boats or do anything uh, that you know, has, a, has, has a lot of cost elements to it. It's entirely political so the fisheries ministers of the coastal states can address the challenges in these fisheries through negotiations and so it's a very tight and very focused um, 
piece of work we're doing here, which is entirely focused on using the market's power to influence these decision makings, to sort of push the ministers into agreement around um, following the advice and sorting out the allocation processes. And as you said, this is the first coastal state meeting that NAPA will be attending or will be taking part in. And this has been a very, very difficult year, year and a half between uh, Brexit and, and COVID. Has any of your plans been impacted during that time? It's um, it's not been an audacious start with the mackerel uh, allocations that have now been published. And you will have seen that um, a couple of the coastal states actually gave themselves quite large increases. For example, Norway um, increased their allocation by 55%, and that was closely followed by the pharaohs matching them. Um, in total, the the allocated catch is hundred just under 142% of the IC's advice. Which is not good at all. So that's that. You know, if if we if we take that, it's that's overfishing. Um, now it doesn't necessarily mean the stock is overfished, but it's certainly, you know, it could well be on a trajectory to that, which is not good because then we actually have a biological improvement need rather than just a policy one. So not an audacious start. We we appreciate that the situation has been complicated by the uh, by Brexit and the the. EU UK divergence um, but as you say this forthcoming coastal state meeting in in October will be the first time that we have the fisher improvement project uh, in place uh, and so we're going to be heavily engaging uh, around this and you know, pushing the coastal states hard to rectify this situation for 2022 and on onwards now we've we've there has been a lot of um, negative publicity around, particularly um, the Norwegian approach, and the Norwegian Pelagic uh, Fishermen's Organisation put a, a statement out, uh, and the final paragraph of that was uh, I would say very conciliatory, um, sort of saying look you know this can't go on we've got to talk we've got to sort out the fishery so that's the kind of messaging that we we welcome and we'd like to see that. Uh, you know, more people taking that approach and actually coming around with a view for let's get agreement on this. Everyone will benefit if we sort out the the management of these fisheries, uh, but everyone's going to lose if we don't. Yeah, there, there's a lot of concern that the, the stocks will be impacted. As you say, it might not be this year or next year, but somewhere down along the line, there's a, a lot of bio biological concerns that the size of the fish could be, size of mackerel, for example, could be damaged by overfishing in Norway or overfishing on, on the Irish coast. And this would have a huge financial impact as well as, as, as environmental impacts. Do you think the I, companies will, countries will start and look at it and go, well, okay, we may be, maybe this is something we better sort out before we actually damage our product that we're selling to countries like Japan and China? Absolutely. This 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 whole package has to be looked at. No one goes into fishing for the, uh, you know, for the sake of it. This is a business, and everyone in the supply chain, from the catchers all the way up to the the retailers, and all the steps in between, you know, it's a business, and we've got to look at it through this lens. What is what is business feasible, uh, and what who are we selling to? It's not just a you know we've just got to land the fish and that's it. It's a product that's being marketed. Uh, and it's a great product that the North Atlantic Pelagics, um, and we've got to look after it. And, and it, this is not a difficult situation. These are data rich fisheries. Um, they're, they're well monitored. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of science. We know what we've got to do. This is a case of just getting common sense in play here, following the science and making these, um, these sensible long-term decisions. Uh, and that will, uh, you know, as you say, it, it will, it will, benefit everyone and we can look after the stock. Well, there, there's been some dissent amongst people uh, in, in the industry towards the ICES, the International Council for the Exploration of Disease advice. And, you know, uh, has, has countries like Norway and, and, and the Faroes, by setting such high micro quotas, have, have, are they disregarding this advice or you know, is, is there something else at play here? Do you think? Um, it's difficult to know. I mean, the the scientific advice is that they that sets the benchmark for what the fishery should be, and th there's there's nothing better 
than that scientific advice on the table. Uh, so it's very clear this is what the fishery should be allocating itself. And how that's allocated is a is a matter for the negotiations table, but that should be the limit. That that's the utter cap of it, and we shouldn't go beyond it. Otherwise, we are we are overfishing. Um, now, what you can't do is do this unilaterally. You can't say, well, you know, we're not interested in anyone else. We're going to pick this amount. This is a shared resource, a shared stock or shared stocks. And they have to be discussed around the table with everyone active in the fishery having this conversation together. And one of the things we'd like to see is um, some form of uh, dispute resolution mechanism incorporated at the coastal states meeting. We, we, you can't have this situation where people just think, well, we're not getting what we want. We're going to go off and do our own thing. That, that's not the way to manage a, a fishery that's, that's shared. So that's one thing we're, we're calling for as well, in addition to the actual sort of management advice, is consider getting uh, a mediator in to, to sort this situation out, because this is not, a, it's not an impossible situation. There's only six, seven coastal states. Um, it, it's not like you've got 30, it's not like a tuna RFMO, for example, we've got 30 plus members here. And, and this is a, you know, a very commercially successful um, fisheries uh, with, a, with a very strong market. So it, everything's in play. It, it, it is somewhat baffling why we can't just see the benefits of a, a shared agreement. Maybe it's he who blinks first, but hopefully we can, through the, the work of Napa, demonstrate that the market has now got to the point where they're not, they're not patient enough to wait forever to see this fishery collapse it's the market has got um they've got seafood sourcing commitments to their customers and they want to see this happen if not they're going to have to um you know independently review their individual sourcing somebody said to me yesterday it's it's more about access to fishing grounds rather than than quota do you think that's the case um where like there was access to where the fish was, the mackerel was in its prime and around the Shetland Islands, uh, north, north of Scotland. And now all those, uh, all that access is gone. So there's kind of like, this is, this is a result of Brexit and this is a fallout from, from it and its consequences has been that uh, Norway and the Faroe Islands have decided we're going our own way. But do you think if the access was reinstated, that we could come back to a, a, a reasonable way of fishing macro. I, I think I think that that um, that assumption is is probably correct. I think access is a big part of the discussion, and that's almost certainly going to have to be part of the negotiation process along with quotas. And I think that's that's something that the all the coastal states need to be addressing around the negotiations table on how we can come to agreement on 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 access on allocations um in a way that that works out for for everyone and and it has to happen you know th this is a shared stock there, there's no getting away from that um everyone has uh, an interest in fishing but we have to do it collectively and responsibly in a way that um you know there is compromise this is a shared stock no one is always going to get everything they want it's, it's never the case so yeah that's i think all of these issues are, are going to be part of the negotiation process and maybe this is why another reason why uh, some form of independent mediator could be could actually prove helpful and beneficial to these discussions and what let's say now with norway does end up fishing their 825,000 tons uh this year that's a lot of mackerel on the market would then that affect what the the Scottish pelagic men would that affect their price when they'd go looking for for the markets then in December, January, February later uh, on. It may do. Um, we're at Napa. We're not sort of getting drilling down into that that far because it is obviously it depends on the individual members where they're buying from and their interest in that. So we tend to operate at, at sort of a a bit of a uh, a more holistic level. But uh, yeah, I'm sure that is going to be a consequence of some of this decision making. And what we're hoping to do is use this commercial power you know, collectively rather than sort of maybe sort of an individual company or companies to actually say, look, we all 
you know, we may be buying from different areas uh, at different times, but we all have this interest in, in sustainably uh, managing the fisheries. So that's, that's the sort of the, the push we're, we're aiming for. And sustainable fisheries, yeah, everybody is, wants that. It's, 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 a, it's a very important part of the industry. And, you know, not just loan, just for, for macro. Um, you, you, you're saying there, if we call it, that means we're also working on projects for blue whiting. What's in the pipeline for, for that at the moment? So we have the, the Marin Trust application. The actual work we're going to be doing on blue whiting is identical to that for the, the herring and the mackerel. The challenges are the same. It's, it's, if you look at the, the reasons that the Marine Stewardship Council certifications were suspended for the three fisheries, they're the same. It's to do with the management uh, rather than the stock size or habitat impact or bycatch. So the advocacy we'll be doing, um, it will be shared between all three. So we're calling for all these follow the advice, long-term management allocation for all three fisheries. So even though one of them, the blue whiting is in the Marin Trust process, whilst that process is different, the work that Napa will be doing will actually be identical, which means it's uh, it, it's a lot easier for us to sort of manage and coordinate between our uh, between our partners and collectively at the centre. Like blue whiting is a, is a series of massive fisheries for uh, feed, and, and so on and so forth. But what's the story with the, in the international waters? Was there was rumours that you're talking about maybe looking for a cap on the on the catches? Yeah, part of um, when we pulled together Napa, uh, we the first meetings were looking at our strategy. What were we going to do? And uh, the improvement project approach was very much favoured for improving the management side of things. As, as a component to that work, uh, we're looking at and agreed that we should look at um, some form of limit or cap on catches in international waters as a tool in the, the management of the fisheries. So that's one of our positions. We're actually in the process of developing a um, a, a detailed position paper on that. Um, it's unclear at this point whether or not we would actually be calling for a specific number, um, say, you know, 10%, 15%, 20%. Um, the UK actually called for uh, a cap on international catches at the last uh, meeting uh, of the coastal states in NEAFC, um, but that was pushed to push back because I think the ongoing discussions on on Brexit, for example. Um, so that is something that we're looking at, and we'll be producing a like I say, a detailed position paper on that later, um, and that will be published on our our web page and shared on social media as well for people to see. But like I say, it's unclear at this point whether we'd actually call for a specific number or whether we would just call for the principle of it. And would you look, be looking at uh, zone, zonal attachment or anything of those issues? Yeah, um, the, see, the NIAF, they actually had an allocation working group, which was a, a positive development. And one of the one of the early pieces of work they did was uh, look at, you know, how could the allocation be, the allocation process be um, be looked at? And one of the, the issues there was zonal attachment. And that's looking at the sort of the, the, the life history, the, where the fish are at various stages of its life and uh, tying that into the, sort of the geographical boundaries of the coastal states. Um, Unfortunately, that allocation work group never really developed from there. So that's, it's still kind of, I would say, sort of hovering around. Uh, we are interested in that. And could that be a mechanism to inform decision-making around allocations? So we are, we are looking at considering whether or not we should um, do some work on that, maybe to inform discussions at the coastal states or NIAP. So no conclusions about that at all. Uh, and we wouldn't be going in that to determine what allocations are we, we're very clear that napa does not get involved in the allocations about who gets what that needs to happen through the coastal states negotiations and that's not for us to say um, but if we can produce a piece of work that informs that discussion then hopefully that would be seen as a positive so that's something we're we're currently looking at and maybe the next time i speak to you um we'll be able to share much further details maybe even a published report on that if if we, if we take it forward and to work on regaining the MSC certification for uh, blue whiting and Atlantoscander herring. How's that come along? Is that where is it in, in, in the uh, in the pipeline there? Yeah. So the the fishery improvement projects and the marine trust improvement projects. We've given ourselves a three year deadline for that. So most FIPS 
um, have a five year timeline you don't have that's the maximum you can you can have it much shorter but we've decided that three years was enough for this because it is a, just a political uh, limitation rather than let's just say rebuilding a stock so the the aim is within three years to get the fisheries through better management to a position where they can regain msc certification should they choose to should this client groups choose to do that uh, of course it could happen much sooner if the right decisions are made by the uh, by the coastal states. Has Napa been working with any other groups or on any other projects outside of the blue whiting, Atlantis candle herring and the mackerel? Um, I, would, I would just say that, you know, we've also had discussions with the catching sector. We held a, a catching sector round table, which was really useful, really interesting. Um, and the aim of that was to just to talk to uh, representatives, representative organizations in the catching sector about the work of Napa uh, and really highlight that, you know, our advocacy is aimed at the fisheries ministers. It's these are the guys making the decisions. And of course, the catching sector uh, is an influential stakeholder and it and it, it you know, it does the job very well of um in, engaging with fisheries ministers so uh we, we're also explaining that um you know we'd love to partner with them um because obviously the better managed fisheries are going to be beneficial for them so it's an open invitation to the catching sector as well is that uh, we, when we're calling for these you know follow the science um etc et very much welcome uh sort of join advocacy efforts on that because this is something that uh you know holistically is is good for everyone so that was good and we're going to be having a follow-up meeting of that uh catching sector round table uh in september so a, a good six weeks before the the coastal states meeting so that'd be another opportunity and um, if people uh, are interested in that and didn't attend the first one it, it's not through any deliberate snub or anything it's just not knowing who to speak to and it would be you know people would be very welcome to contact us if they'd like to be sort of added to um, a mailing list to attend the next catching sector meeting and um, where can people get in contact with you uh if you have your website email address or yeah if you search for napa and seafish uh, on Google, then you'll find the link to the page. It's probably the best way to tell you rather than give you the, the long URL. Uh, but yeah, Napa and Seafish, uh, and we've got that. We've also got a Twitter account with it with it on. It's at Napa Fisheries. Very good, Tom. And any other major projects and that Napa is looking at uh, any other pelagic species that could be? Just them three. So that's, uh, that's the ones we're focused on. Um, if that was to change, for example, say North Sea herring, uh, then that would that would have to go via our steering committee. Um, no one's no one's actually raised that at all since Napa has been going and we've been going for 18 months now. Um, it's very much focused on the, the, the three species, but um, it would it's something that we would take to the steering committee to see what they they thought. But uh, at the minute, focus on uh, North North Atlantic uh, mackerel, Atlantis gandic herring and blue whiting. Well, Tom, as always, it's very interesting to chat to you and to find out what's happening with the pelagic sector and, and the North Atlantic. Um, hopefully we'll have you back soon again and you'll be able to give us an update, especially after the uh, council meeting in October. Absolutely. Uh, thank you very much for having us and um, you know, always happy to have a chat.